Hi, my name is Leah Day, and welcome to this video for the Free Motion Quilting Project. Today we're working on Express Your Love, and I actually am going to be working on design uh, from this book. This is my book, 365 Free Motion Quilting Designs. And basically, back when I started the project, um, the first hundred designs or so were really done very quickly. Uh, that was back when I was posting new videos for new designs every single day. Uh, through the first 40 or so, um, and there was one or two, actually more than that, probably a good handful of designs that when I went back through and stitched them out for the book, uh, I decided to change them a little bit. I decided that, you know, they needed to change in, in whatever way. They didn't look as good, they looked too similar to another design, or simply that they, when I stitched them out initially, they weren't what I was wanting. Um, Back then, I didn't have the skill to always, you know, I would draw something and come up with a design, but I didn't always have the skill to stitch it. And, I mean, I think that's a really good thing to admit because your quilting skill is continually changing. It is continually improving. Even my skill is still improving now. Uh, I see changes, you know, sometimes I can stitch even tinier than I used to be able to. And it's all a building process. And so when I went back through and stitched these, of course the old videos don't really correlate with what the photo that you see in the book. So uh, for the next couple of videos, I'm just going to go through and kind of hit some of these designs that uh, the video doesn't really, the old video doesn't really work for, and show you how I restitched it and how I improved it. So the design that we're working on today is called Concentric Circles. And here's a photo of the original. And here's a photo of how it was changed for the book. And uh, it's a beautiful design. How I changed it was to literally make concentric circles, a circle within a circle, connected with a spiral. And when I made the change, I absolutely fell in love with this design. It's super funky, and it's going to look great in any area of uh, the Express Your Love Goddess quilt. I'm using it in the background in one of those rays of the sun. And I am stitching this out in another color of thread. I'm stitching this out in buttercup, so it's yellow. And that yellow, combined with those circles and a lot of travel stitching, is really standing out beautifully on the quilt. So let's get started and see how this works in free motion. Okay, so here you can see we've done a little bit of stitching, and I have this kind of little weird area. I could come in here with a small circle, or I could do a half circle, cut it in half, it's really, you kind of have to just look at it and decide, make the decision as you go. I think I'm going to stitch down and come up with a half circle. Not even a half circle, probably. Okay. And because this is a half circle, I'm going to travel stitch back. You don't have to do this. I'm just doing this so you can see what I'm doing. Because whenever you cut this design in half, take a look at it. You know, I'm holding my finger over this design. And you can kind of visualize, well, what... What is that supposed to look like? And that's how I'm going to fill in this little area right here. So really just internal echoes. And you're always going to have those little weird areas that you just have to figure out how to deal with them. And they're not going to be stitched the exact same way as the rest of the design. They're going to be stitched rather differently. So you just have to kind of figure that out. Okay, and then through this area, I'm just going to stitch a little circle to fill in that little gap. Okay, so now I want to show you how this design really works. Okay, so we're going to stitch a circle first. Okay, and now I kind of want to visualize the middle of that circle. Just kind of keep it in my head as I stitch into the area. I'm leaving space to get back out again. Then I come around and stitch a full circle. And notice how I built up the thread stitching around it. I stitched around it a second time so that way it built it up and made it nicely stand out. And now I work my way back out again. And then fill in that little gap, another little circle. With stacking designs like this one, you're just trying to lock those circles together as well as you can. You know, they're not all going to be the same size and shape, but you do want to try and maintain a consistent scale through all of these lines of quilting. And then it'll look really nicely. And this 
fine if you stitch off a little bit. Just fill it in a little bit. This is a really forgiving design. You can always add more thread to it. Okay, I've got another situation here where I could fill this in with circles. I could fill this in with a half circle. Uh, really, there's no wrong way to do it. So I'm just going to kind of come in here and do a small half, uh, small circle, maybe cut off a little bit of it on the edge. That looks good. So you can see you kind of swirl into the circle. Let me stitch another one. You swirl in, stitch your circle inside, stitch around it to travel stitch and build it up, and then stitch your way back out again. And just remember that anytime you hit an edge, just cut it in half and stitch some internal echoes and it will maintain that same consistent look. When they get really small, you just have to do your best to get in and uh, get back out again without it getting too dense. Some areas are just going to get kind of weird and you just have to make the best of it that you can. So right here I'm just going to do two small empty circles right here. It's the best way to fill that space. At this point, I'm going to travel stitch and work my way over to this little area and fill it in. Uh, as you can see, this is kind of a time-consuming design. It's definitely a multi-step process, and it's going to be a design that if you cover large areas of your quilt, it's going to be fairly time-consuming. So just keep that in mind whenever you make a decision of where you want to place it. And don't be afraid to do these little half circle or you know kind of crescent moon shapes that's really the best way to fill in right against those edges. And then also don't be afraid of making nice big circles to fill in a space like this situation. I am going to go in ahead and swirl into a spiral even though part of it's locked off. The more you move and stitch a design, the more familiar you get with it and the more you know what it can do and how it will fit and fill into your space. Let's do this up with just a few more little lines of quilting. Here we go. So that is concentric circles. I hope you enjoyed playing with this design this week. Remember, it is going to be kind of time consuming to stitch those circles, stack them together, work your way inside, fill it with that spiral and center circle. So it is a little bit on the time consuming scale, but texture wise, it is a knockout. It's really going to stand up and shout at you from the surface of the quilt. So make sure to put it in a place where you really want uh, a dynamic punch of texture in your quilts. So my name is Leah Day and this has been a video for the Free Motion Quilting Project. Check out more videos on Express Your Love, learning how to stitch out many designs in this beautiful goddess quilt. Check it all out at freemotionproject.com. Until next time, let's go quilt!